Hi everyone and welcome to Travelling One Way My Way. In today's video we're going to be looking at some top tips for visiting Disney's Epcot. This video is aimed at people looking to get the most out of their experience at Epcot in just a really short amount of time. Firstly, and this one applies to any of the Disney parks that you visit, you want to lock in those fast passes 30 days before your visit. For anyone who doesn't know what fast passes are, Disney offer essentially skip the queue uh, passes for up to three rides from one park per day. If you're a Disney Resort guest you can book your passes up to 60 days in advance and for normal ticket holders it's 30 days in advance. For Epcot fast passes are separated into two tiers so for tier one you can pick one attraction and for tier two you can pick two attractions. Uh, in tier one they have Frozen Ever After, Soarin', Test Track, Epcot Character Greeting and Illuminations the Nighttime Show. Uh, in tier two, we have Mission Space, Spaceship Earth, Turtle Talk with Crush, Journey into the Imagination with Figment, uh, Pixar Short Film Festival, and Living with the Land. Um, now, as your fast passes are super, super, super precious, you want to think carefully about which ones you want to pick. Uh, for your tier one selection, I would consider using that for Frozen Ever After. Um, it's not the most thrill heavy ride, but as it's a sort of fun for the whole family attraction, it tends to get very busy. If this one doesn't apply to you, I would go for Soarin'. Um, the next sort of two big rides, I guess, would be Soarin' and Test Track, but Test Track has a single rider option. So if you can get your fast pass in for Soarin', if the queues are really busy for Test Track, you can just do a single rider, if you're cool with that. For your tier two passes, I would consider using them for Spaceship Earth, and Mission Space. Those two are the likeliest to get busy. They're both quite iconic to the park um, and it's all about maximising your time. So not only thinking with your fast passes, not only thinking which rides are my most interesting going on, but also which ones are most likely to get really, really busy. My next tip would be to get to the park as early in the morning as you can. You'll be so surprised how quickly that time just goes. Now I normally get there for about 8.30 so hopefully I can get through bag check, ticket check, the toilet, the water fountain and walk to the ride within that half an hour so I'm not eating into that park time. If you do take my advice and get to the park early the next tip will be a doddle. Run straight to Soarin', particularly if you haven't got a fast pass for it. It's a really good ride, you may want to do it more than once anyway, and if you run straight there, um, you can get on it straight away, and then you've still got your three fast passes potentially ahead of you, and you've set yourself up for a really good first day. Another suggestion that I would make that I haven't really seen other people offer or suggest or really talk about is if you're going to Florida and you're doing all the Disney parks, I would do Epcot first. People either love Epcot or they really don't. It's not your typical thrill heavy park. It's got some really charming aspects, but it's not for everyone. Start with Epcot, so you've got a blank slate and then hopefully when you're doing the other parks, it just feels like you're building up and up. Unlike a lot of the other parks, Epcot tends to have lots of other things going on. So just look it up, like whatever your date you're going, just see what's going on whilst you're there because I can guarantee if there's a special event like that going on, there's gonna be an influx in people. Lastly, and this one applies to not just any Florida park or Disney park, but any theme park you go to, and it's a really obvious one, just pace yourself. Um, I'm really guilty of being like a kid in a candy store when I get into a theme park, and I've got my map, and I've got my list, and I wanna do everything, and I wanna see everything, and I wanna do all the shows that there are, and I wanna watch all the things that there are to do, and I wanna eat all the top things that all the blogs are saying to eat, um, but really just pace yourself. Um, particularly if you want a safer evening show, and I really recommend doing that. It's a really nice end and finale to a, to a Disney day. It's also worth mentioning that no matter how well you plan, things are gonna go wrong or things unforeseen things are gonna happen. Um, but then hopefully by being as planned as you can be, it minimizes the impact on your day. For example, the last time I was there last month, um, I had planned my fast passes, um, I had done an itinerary, literally minute by minute of what we were going to do. We got there half an hour early, we'd done everything right. We went straight on Soarin', as I suggested, it was brilliant. It was 9.15, 
ready to go to test track, got there, started queuing, and they were turning everyone away, essentially, because there was a car stuck on the track and they hadn't been able to get it started that day. Now, that's just a few of my top tips and things I found really helpful when trying to get the most out of Epcot. I've always found that we've always been able to do all the big rides and everything in the world showcase that we wanted to do um, and finishing it like a really nice time just as the fireworks are about to start. They are long days. I think I always do about 16 miles on those days. Um, but you know, you can go as, as hard or not as, as you want. You can tailor it to your own preference. In terms of rides, I would say the must-dos are Soarin', Test Track, and mission space. I'd say they're your most sort of adrenaline-esque rides that you'll get there. But other classics include Living With The Land. I find that's a really nice tone setter for Epcot in terms of feeling like you're kind of getting on board with what Epcot's about and why it's so different from other parks. Spaceship Earth is the big golf ball. Um, again, that's a classic, it's really dated. Um, but again, it's, it's a classic and I feel like it, it sets the tone for the park. And the three caballeros for the lols. It's like a Mexican centric, it's a small world, it's hilarious. Um, but it means you get to sit down. And I always find like the log rides in the parks really soothing. Like when you've been on your feet all day and then you just get in this log and you're like, okay chilled. As for food and drink, I know this is um, a really big reason that a lot of people um, go to Epcot. I think it's only been in recent years you can drink alcohol in Epcot. So some people do like a world tour of drinks. Um, I've never done that. I'm not very good drinking in the heat. I'd save yourself for the world showcase. So um, when you get into the park, you've got Future World West and Future World East, which is where you've got um, your rides. And then you get round to the lake. And then around the lake, you've got the World Showcase and you've got all your different countries. And that's where you can like really get into the heart of like different foods and drinks. So Mexico has tequila and nachos. Um, Norway has school bread and Germany has um, bratwurst. So it's, you know, Italy has pizza and France has crepes. So it's, you know, if there's, you can kind of get, by doing the food and drink, you can really get involved in the little countries, which I really like. I highly recommend the nachos in Mexico. The school bread in Norway is supposed to be amazing, but it's coated in coconut, and I'm not, not a fan. And the pizzas in Italy are supposed to be really authentic as well. Do not recommend the food in Japan. We got sesame chicken and rice, and it was just really bland, and it tasted like it had all been boiled. There are so many blogs out there of things that people say are must tries, must drinks, must eats. Um, so do your research if it's something that ap appeals to you. Do your research so you can find something that you're actually gonna really enjoy and make it part of your experience. I think that's everything that I have to say about Epcot. I hope you have a lovely time and let me know what you think.